Okay, in this problem, we are going to find a spectral decomposition of a matrix A. Um, and what a spectral decomposition is, it's first, it's a decomposition. Uh, so basically, we're going to write this matrix as a linear combination of other matrices. Um, but also, uh, the, the matrices that uh, it will be written as a linear combination of those are going to serve as projections um, of uh, matrices or of vectors that we multiply those by um, in particular directions. So in general, let's say that we find, um, you know, lambda 1, lambda 2, up to lambda n for matrix A. Obviously, there's only going to be two of those here. Uh, but if we find those, um, and then if we find... Uh, let's call them, I guess from the last section, they'll be called Q1, Q2, uh, et cetera, up to Qn. Those are going to be unit vectors um, uh, that, uh, that make up the matrix P. Uh, then if we have those, then the spectral decomposition is going to be lambda 1, Q1, Q1 transpose, plus lambda 2, q2, q2 transpose, um, et cetera. Just finding <clears throat> each of those uh, products and doing the linear combination as um, shown. So remember that q1 through qn are going to be um, n by 1 uh, vectors. So q1 times q1 transpose will actually give me an n by n vector. Um, so each one of these are n by n vectors. The lambdas, of course, are the scalars, which are real numbers. So we will get a linear combination where the coefficients are the um, eigenvalues, and then these matrices that we get serve the role uh, that I mentioned at the top of this video. So let's see how to do that for this. We do need to find, obviously, the eigenvalues for this first. So let's start by setting that up in the... Uh, the way that we do that. And so what I end up getting when I multiply all this out, the characteristic polynomial is lambda squared plus lambda minus six. And that is lambda plus three times lambda minus two. So I get lambda equals negative three or lambda equals two. Those are my two eigenvalues. Um, it doesn't really matter what order I do these in, so I'll just start with lambda equals negative 3. If I put that in right here, I'm going to get 4, 2, 2, 1, um, and then, of course, put the zeros on since I'm solving that homogeneous system. Notice that the top row is twice the bottom row, so using uh, row operations, uh, the one of those rows will zero out, and in fact... Um, we could just make this one zero out and we could multiply the top row by one fourth. That way we'll get a leading um, one right there. So this is going to be the um, RREF for this matrix. Now, um, X2 is our free variable and X1 plus half of X2 is zero. That's that top uh, row. And of course that means X1 would be negative one half T. So my matrix then, or my vector rather, um, is going to be minus one half t uh, t. Now, if I took the t's out, uh, that would be fine. I would have negative one half one, but I'll go ahead and pull out t over two, and that way, what I end up getting is a vector with integer coefficients, which is much easier to work with. Um, so that is going to be uh, my u one. But as we saw in the last video, if the eigenspace has a single um, vector as its basis, then not only is U1 that, but V1 is that as well. And then to get Q1, we will just normalize V1. So uh, the magnitude of V1 is root 5, so I'll get negative 1 over root 5, uh, 2 over root 5. All right? So that's one of the cues in the spectral decomposition. Let's find the other one. And so for lambda equals 2, if I plug that in here, I'm going to get negative 1, 2, 
2, negative 4. And you'll notice that the um, bottom row is uh, twice, actually negative 2 times the top row. So um, this one will zero out. And then if I just change the sign on the top row to get a leading 1, this is the RREF for that matrix. And so if I, again, have x2 be equal to t, then that equation is x1 minus 2x2 is 0, which makes x1 2t. So in this case, x is uh, um, of the form 2t comma t. If we factor the t out, we have 2, 1. So again, there's just a single um, vector in that basis. And so therefore, u1 is that vector, v1 is that vector, and then q, actually, I, I guess I should say 2. Um, q2, uh, this again has a magnitude of root 5, so we'll say 2 over root 5, 1 over root 5. So now, let's, now that we have the q's, let's go ahead and find that decomposition. So, um, the decomposition for this matrix, remember it should have negative 3 as one of the coefficients, and in fact, uh, negative 1, 2 was the, or sorry, negative 1 over root 5, 2 over root 5 was the vector, so then we're going to uh, multiply by its transpose. And we're going to do a similar thing for lambda equals 2. Uh, we're going to multiply that by 2 over root 5, 1 over root 5. And then that by its transpose. So this matrix is going to be 1 fifth, negative 2 fifths, negative 2 fifths, 4 fifths. And this matrix is going to be 4 fifths, 2 fifths, 2 fifths, 1 fifth. And we can do a quick check just to verify that this decomposition is in fact a decomposition. Negative uh, 3 fifths plus 8 fifths is 5 fifths, which is 1. Uh, 6 fifths plus 4 fifths is 10 fifths, which is 2. 6 fifths plus 4 fifths again is 2. And negative 12 fifths plus 2 fifths is negative 10 fifths, which is negative 2. So this is, in fact, a decomposition. And now what we want to do is we want to see what the significance of this is, because this is our answer. Uh, but what, what does a spectral decomposition uh, tell you? Well, if we were to apply um, this matrix A uh, by any 2 by 1 vector, let's just say x, then we know that that will be the same thing as negative 3 times this matrix times x plus 2 times this other matrix times x. Now, um, if I look just at this part, and the same part on the second one. What that's going to end up being is this is the projection, or this will be the same thing as the projection of x onto q1. I'll uh, compute this in just a second to show you. And then this will be 2 times the projection of x onto q2, all right? So it, it essentially gives you, uh, multiplying uh, this matrix by x, gives you a vector in the direction of uh, the two basis, normalized basis vectors. Um, just to convince you of that, so let's say that I did, um, let's actually compute this one. Now I'm going to write x as um, x1, x2. This is just in general. Um, but you'll end up getting 
1 fifth x1 minus 2 fifths x2, and then down here, negative 2 fifths x1 plus 4 fifths x2. Now, to convince you that that's the same thing as projecting, uh, let's project x1, x2 onto the vector. Let's see, q1 was minus 1 over root 5, 2 over root 5. So remember, that will be the dot product of the two. So negative 1 over root 5 x1 uh, plus 2 over root 5 x2 over the dot product of this vector with itself. And remember, it was a unit vector, so we're just going to get a 1. Um, and then we will multiply that by uh, this vector. That will be the scalar um, that goes on this vector. And so notice that if I were to distribute this across to both components, I would get 1 fifth x1 minus 2 fifths x2. And then down here, negative 2 fifths x1 plus 4 fifths x2. And you can see that that is, in fact, the same thing uh, that we ended up with when we just multiplied uh, by this matrix. Um, I'm not going to do the second one, but it'll work the exact same way uh, if we were to compute that, except it'll be the projection onto Q2, which for this problem was, um, here it is, 2 over root 5, 1 over root 5. Um, so that's what a spectral decomposition would tell you. Not only is it a decomposition, uh, but it's a decomposition into essentially projections, essentially saying, let's decompose so that it would be um, essentially... Uh, applied to a vector would be in the direction of one of the normalized basis vectors uh, plus the other one. Uh, but again, uh, just to recap, this was the answer for this particular problem. The rest of it was just checking and seeing what that ends up being. So um, I hope that makes sense, and if you have any questions, please let me know.